God has us here as born again believers to bring forth much fruit. Here it is, my Father, glorified that you bring forth much fruit. That is our job. He's given you the best gift that anyone could ever ask for, and you didn't have to work for it at all. He's bestowed that upon you because He loves you, and He wants you to be saved, and He wants you to have eternal life and to be with Him, and He gets all the glory and honor and recognition. But you know what? It's kind of insulting once you take that free gift. Not that you have to earn it, or not that you have to pay God back, but to just be so selfish and self-centered to just say, well, thanks, God. I'm not going to tell anyone else about this great gift and how they could be saved from an eternity in hell. And I'm just going to go off and just do whatever I want to do. Thanks for that great gift. And you're basically spitting in his face when you decide not to do anything for the Lord that saved you, for the Lord that bought you with a price, with a precious price. And yeah, I, you know, I think that makes God angry. I do. I know as a father, humanly speaking, it would make me angry if I give the, the most I could possibly give for any one of them and they just treat it like it's nothing, like it's no big deal. Well, I'll tell you what, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross was not nothing. That was everything. Everything. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is an immense gift. That is precious. What are you doing with that gift? We got saved. Yeah, amen. And I'll be glad to see you in heaven. But let's go about to, to do those things which please our father in heaven. Let's bring forth much fruit. And, and we see in many instances, this is just one small example. And this is, this is a very small, you, this isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about God you know, being angry when people don't get involved and get in the fight and, and step up and, and do, the, you know, this is just kind of a side note. But it's found, that concept is found all throughout Scripture. Even in the little stories like this, just in, just in one verse, verse 23, curse ye miraz, said the angel of the Lord, curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Now notice it also didn't say they didn't come to the help of Barak. It doesn't say they didn't come to the help of Deborah. Now, humanly speaking, they were, they may have been leading the charge. But it wasn't about Barak and it wasn't about Deborah. It's about doing what's right for the Lord. And, you know, in this fight, we ought to be able to put aside personalities. We ought to be able to put aside, you know, who this person is or who that person is. If we're in the fight, we're in the same battle and we're believers and there's other believers, we ought to be able to just say, hey, I'm going to join the fight, too. And I'm not just going to say, oh, well, I don't like Deborah. And I don't like Barak. So I'm just going to stay out of it altogether. No, because if, the, if it's a battle of the Lord, you're not going there to support the Lord by staying out of the fight. It says, they came not to help, to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. God expects us to help. Help. 